Hey, what's up guys, John here. My opinion on what's going on with inflation is gonna be very different than just about everyone else on YouTube and on social media. A lot of people believe that what's gonna happen is that interest rates are gonna remain elevated for a short period of time, and then ultimately rates will go back down lower, and at that time, everyone's gonna be able to refinance their properties and everything's gonna be great. For example, I went to uh, get breakfast this morning, there was a table next to me, and it was, uh, I don't know if it was a real estate agent or real estate professional speaking with a client saying, you know what, it doesn't matter what the rates are today. In a couple of years, you're you're going to be able to refinance. And that's the common trend. That's what a lot of people believe. They believe that everything is going to be okay. But I believe that we're in the greatest economic rug pull ever set up in history and that they are going to rug pull just about everybody over the next year or two. Based on just the chain of events, the facts, what actually happened over the last three years, they printed 40% of all USD since 1776. In the last 250 years, they printed 40% of all of the money supply. And then on top of that, they made all bills optional. Mortgages, utilities, student loans. I mean, everything was basically optional. Even student loans right now are not due. And so what's ultimately happening? They're building up this false sense of security in the economy, letting everyone think that they're rich. And then what are they ultimately doing? They're increasing rates slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly, bleeding everything out. This is an attack on regional banks. This is a complete attack on America. We're witnessing something huge here. And if you connect the dots, you'll see what I see. And I'm gonna walk you through it because this is nuts. And I think ultimately when we look back on this and you know, in due time, we're gonna realize that you know, I think I was spot on, and I think that we're going to see some people make a lot of money because they're positioned for what's actually happening. And we're going to see a lot of other people that think it's just, you know, some crazy theory and it's not actually going to happen and everything's completely fine and the world's fine and, and there's no issues. I mean, I just don't see that. But, uh, I mean, look at this. So, U.S. inflation cooled significantly in May, but it's not where the Fed wants it. Well, wouldn't a logical, a logical thing to do if they wanted to bring down inflation be to increase oil production to drive down the cost of energy? Because that alone would decrease cost across the board. But no, they're not doing that. They're putting out all these new green energy policies and they're putting out these uh, new protections for the environment, which are ultimately going to be inflationary. So they're putting forward inflationary pressures all the while. They're costing the they're increasing the cost of service debt across credit cards, uh, mortgages, commercial loans, uh, adjustable rate loans, home equity lines of credit. Uh, all of these mortgages are increasing the cost across the board, right? Why would that make? Why would they do that? If they were trying to draw draw down inflation. Wouldn't they? Wouldn't they just drive down energy costs first? Wouldn't that be the first priority? Because look at this. I saw, I googled this, and I'm like, hmm. This doesn't look at this. So. You scroll down here, first article, the first article it says the, con the conventional tool of monetary policy such as short term interest rates affect demand supply side conditions by altering cost of borrowing. These conventional tools are ineffective in controlling supply chain generated inflation. Unless we tackle climate, prices won't stabilize and persistent inflation will become the new normal, right? This is, this is what's actually happening. It, it's, but we are going to likely see Jerome Powell continue to increase interest rates. Maybe in the short term, maybe tomorrow's meeting he doesn't increase rates. But uh, I believe that it's highly likely that maybe he will do 25 basis points. Maybe he'll skip this meeting. But if he does, the next meeting he's going to likely hike. And the next meeting they're going to hike. They're going to continue to move in this direction. So how bad is this, this situation? Well, U.S. inflation cooled significantly in May, but it's not where the Fed wants it. Right now, remember uh, when Jerome Powell said that he's going to keep hiking until something breaks? So far, nothing's really broken. You could say SVB, you could say First Republic Bank, you could say Credit Suisse, you could say that. But they're not, they're not giving that the gravity of what they consider as something breaking. They're basically saying, you know, it, it's fine. You know, these banks were poorly funded or these banks were, you know, they were irresponsible or whatever uh, excuse they want to have. But if you look at what's going on in the labor market and you start to connect the dots here, you'll start to see problems. So, so far in 2023, we had 206,000 employees laid off. So far, or all of last year, we had 164,000. So we are on track probably by the end of the year with the current trajectory of rate hikes, probably to hit somewhere around 450,000 uh, employees laid off. And at that number, at that number, conservatively, that's twice as bad as last year. But we're moving into a, a big direction in which all these corporations, you look at these, these names, Grubhub, um, I mean, a lot of these tech names, are issuing these layoffs and they're they're laying off large large blocks uh, Linktree, but they're laying off large blocks of employees which are likely going to be replaced 
uh, with international talent or AI, robotics, and technology over the next five years. This isn't going to be something that's going to happen gradually or something quickly, but uh, what we're starting to see here is corporations they are going to be restructuring how they fund and finance their businesses, uh, all of which is going to have a really big impact on affordability in America. Now, one big, really big uh, caveat here that a lot of people do not realize is this real estate problem. This real estate problem is worse than I could even think. You know, 98% of borrowers have below market mortgage rates. That's keeping housing inventory tight. People are locked in to their homes. Now, some people may be like, hey, that's good. You know, it's better than renting. And I would agree with you. 100% I would agree with you. Uh, it is probably better than renting for most people in most circumstances. However, what happens when you lose your job? What happens when you know inflation continues to persist? What happens when you need to get access to money and you can't refinance your property? Well, you're only going to have a few options. These homeowners only have three options. The first option is that they, you know, they're underwater. They give the house back to the bank. That's that's one option. The second option is that they rent out their properties. Like you can see right here, CPI rent cools for the second straight month with sharper cooling for some. They're going to rent out their homes in total, the whole house they'll rent out. And the third option is going to be the bring in roommates. There's really only three. You could say Airbnb is a fourth option, but you know, to me, that's renting out your house. So this is what's going to happen on a large, large scale all across America as we continue down this journey. And so when that does happen, we're going to likely see rents across the board continue to fall across multifamily and commercial real estate. And if we look at what's going on with multifamily and commercial real estate right now, it's a big problem, right? These buildings, most of which, their, their borrowing costs have skyrocketed and their cost of insurance and taxes have increased, yet the rents are softening, especially office. You look at office, office is getting hit really hard right now. Um, but all of this with new housing inventory bringing, you know, for rent, it's going to make rents likely soften further, especially when we look at what's going on with these new home builders that are bringing 1.7 million new homes to market over the next 12 months, all of which I would believe are going to probably go for rent. They're probably going to sell to private equity. Private equity will likely list these communities as a whole for lease because of these home builders that are building all these properties, thinking a 3% mortgage buyer was going to be on the other side of that. Now looking at rates at 8%, 7.5 to 8%, you know, that buyer's probably not there anymore, right? They likely can't afford it. I mean, the cost right now to borrow is, is crazy. And people don't realize this. Uh, more than 40% of all U.S. mortgages were originated between 2020 and 2021. When the pandemic drove borrowing costs to historic lows, right? 4D, not 4. I had someone in the comment section the other day saying 4, only 4%. No, it's 4D percent. Nearly half of all mortgages in America were taken out at record high home prices. People are locked into their homes. They can't escape. Um, it's, a, it's a bad situation. Like if you look at just borrowing 100K on your home, well, like on a refi at 8%, it's 734 bucks a month. People be like, okay, that's not a bad payment. But for you to qualify for that, you're gonna have to show an additional probably two grand a month in additional income over your current expenses, which is gonna be really challenging for most people to do to access 100K. And then ultimately that's gonna you know, put a lot of people in a, in a worse situation to get, take an 8% mortgage. As we look at that, we start to see this new trend that's popping up that's huge. And I think this trend is going to uh, create a massive bubble. It's this buy now, pay later. But this affordability crisis is driving people to have no other option but to move forward into this buy now, pay later scenario. And this buy now, pay later scenario, 60% of all consumers are using buy now, pay later. This is as of 2021. This is when the market was good. This is when people were making money with, you know, selling JPEGs and altcoins and doing all these different things and they were making a fortune. You know, investing in stocks, they had no idea what the company really was, what their, you know, P&L looked like, what, they had nothing. They had no information. They just saw something on Twitter and they invested and made money. That was the dynamic in 2021. And at that time, 60% of consumers were using buy now, pay later, right? And this lady is even talking about a story that it seems like I would imagine this story is going to be much more like the traditional everyday American story. About two months ago, Israel, a part-time grocery worker in Flint, Michigan, was in the checkout at Walmart staring at a $400 bill. And she had recently lost her full-time job as a recruiter with a lot less money coming in, $400, a lot to handle at once. So she paid for her purchases with Klarna, a buy now, pay later app that divided the payments into, divided the charge into four payments. And she made payments every two weeks. It definitely helps a lot with bills. Instead of taking it all out at once, I don't have to use my credit card. I'd rather not be in debt with people. 
Well, she's in debt with Klarna. But this is going to be a huge, huge trend. Uh, this is going to be a big, big trend. It's already kind of starting right now. It says, Americans using buy now, pay later to afford groceries. Look at this article right here. So the Lending Tree survey showed that the largest percentage, 46% of consumers, have used the method for clothing, shoes, and accessories with home furniture, appliances, the next largest category, 34%, technology, beauty products, came at a 27 and 26% respectively. What's more, 20%, 21% of shoppers use the plan for groceries, 18 use it for events, 11% for travel. Uh, this is huge. This is this is big. Um, but, you know, the Fed says bank, the banks are going to likely tighten. Well, what, do you, what would you guess, right? If you were to look at things clearly, look at things very, very clearly, not from a consumer, from a bank. You're looking at most people are underwater. You're starting to see rise in bankruptcies. You're starting to see more and more layoffs. You're seeing record high consumer debt of $17 trillion, most of which was locked in at much lower rates and the cost to service that debt is going up every single month when real-time wages are falling. What, what do you think is going to happen? You have commercial rents that are starting to come down. A lot of these regional banks are holding a lot of these loans. Would you go out there and say, you know what? I want to issue a ton of loans right now. No, you probably wouldn't. You would probably, you know, batten down the hatches and you would only lend money to people that, you know, looked like they were going to pay you back. And you would try to figure out a way in which you could weather this upcoming storm. And it is going to be a storm because they are going to continue to increase interest rates. They are not done by a long shot. This is not going to go away this year. Um, you like if you just like look at bankruptcies. Core bankruptcies are set to reach a decade-long high. Uh, repeat bankruptcies are piling up at the fastest rate since 2009. I mean, core bankruptcy are edging up to a new pressure to hit the economy. U.S. credit squeeze triggers rising corporate bankruptcies. Like this is this is what's happening, right? This is what's happening. Uh, what do you think? Where do you see this all going? I believe right now that if you see what I'm seeing, if you see these trends and you do want to invest, you do want to position yourself, one of the number one things you should do right now is look to make sure you can get out of. If you have credit card debt, get out of it. Like There's ways you can do that. You can get out of credit card debt. Um, you can do balance transfers. You can do the other things. And the reason you want to do that is because as they hike interest rates, look at like credit card interest calculator. Go look up your certain, your situation. You can type in your numbers and you can look at the difference of how much this actually costs you every single month. It might be shocking based on just the discrepancy of interest rates as they rise. I mean, you might pay an extra two, three, four thousand dollars in interest on the difference of a few thousand bucks worth of you know debt just making the minimum payments because as they keep hiking interest rates it's going to get harder and harder and harder to get ahead there's still a lot of credit card companies right now that are issuing balance transfer options for zero percent interest so i would explore that you need a credit score of about 700 between 700 and 720 in most circumstances to get approved for one of those but i would definitely look at that i would just make sure you position yourself for this uh, learn, study, read, and position yourself in a business or some type of vehicle that's going to be able to weather the storm. Uh, there's going to be huge opportunities for people that see, you know, what's actually happening. And I think that a lot of people don't. A lot of people, I think 90, 95% of people probably think that this is just going to be fine. It's not going to be a big, big deal. It's going to be like a, you know, a 2020 situation where, you know, it, it drops and they bail everyone out and everything's fine. It's a buy the dip moment. Uh, I think it's going to be a little worse than that. I think there's going to be huge opportunities. If you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you. We'd love to give you a free consultation. With great credit, you're going to be able to likely get approved for lower interest rate loans, balance transfers, uh, mortgages when the time comes. There's going to be huge opportunities, but you're going to need good credit because banks aren't going to be lending to people of high risk. I can almost promise you that. Look at 2008, 2009, 2010. What did banks do? People with bad credit, they were out of the game. They were, it, was, it was game over for them. So if you need help, we'd love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. Schedule a free consultation on the site. And uh, add me on IG for uh, content I won't post here. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.